three things one and all is clear. Now, Gemini incarnation and Gemini duration. Gemini incarnation on 16th November 1919 up to 21st March 2005. He was an Indian actor who worked mainly for Tamil cinemas. He was nicknamed as Kadal Manan, which means King of Romance. For the romantic roles, he played in films. A recipient of Padma Shri in 1971, he has won several other awards, including the Kalai Mamani Award, the MGR Gold Medal, and the Screen Lifetime Achievement Award. His doctor, Dr. Kamala Selvaraj, is an obstetrician and gynecologist from Tamil Nadu, India. She commissioned the first test tube for baby of South India in August 1990. In 2002, she was awarded PhD for her thesis on premature ovarian, ovarian failure and its management. She was also awarded the Best Lady Doctor Award uh, in 1993 and Rajiv Gandhi Memorial National Integration Award in 1995. More than 800 babies have been born as a result of assisted reproduction therapy conducted by her hospital. Uh, her achievements uh, established fertility research center in 1989 at GG Hospital with assisted reproduction technology, program India's third and South India's first SQ baby by IVF established in 1990, first surrogate baby of India in 1994, programmed and delivered the first baby in India by her own concept of fruity technique in assisted reproduction in 1995, uh, India's first IVF established baby to a 55 year old woman in 2002, achieved South India's first higher number of successful test tube baby deliveries from 1989 by assisted reproduction technology and has declared it to conducting a press meet and delivering a lecture on test tube babies, assisted reproduction technology at Jordan Park. South India's first test tube, uh, Mrs. Kamala Ratnam delivered a female baby to national conception which is first of its kind in India on 10th July 2014. Thank you. Good evening everyone. It is now my proud privilege to introduce the speaker, Dr. Jay Baskar, with a diploma in dermatology and dip in, um, diploma in clinical neurology. He is a presently a consultant neurologist and consultant dermatologist. He is academically oriented with a wide experience in clinical neurology and has been practicing for the past 38 years in the city of Chennai. With a keen interest in movement disorders, he got trained by the late Professor C. E. Marston. Professor Neal Quinn and Professor A. J. Lees of Institute of Neurology, Queen Square, London, UK, and presently runs a movement disorders clinic in public health center. He has active participation in national and international conferences and workshops in neurology, has also written a series of articles and recorded interesting and rare cases in Indian Journal and in the House Journal of T. S. Srinivasan Department of Clinical Neurology and Research. He is active teacher has been teaching clinical neurology regularly from the inception of BOT and BPT courses in city colleges, delivering guest lectures to students of MPT course in Wales College of Physiotherapy. He has uh, served as a consultant, clinical neurologist in TSS Department of Clinical Neurology and Research from 1983 until 2008 under the able guidance of Professor Krishnamurti Shreva, to whom he owes all his credentials as a neurologist too. He continues as a consultant neurologist in public health center and has also taken the responsibility of being the medical superintendent of this reputed institution. He is also a clinical dermatologist and private practice and has a private practice since graduation in 1982. And he is also a member of many societies around the world. He is a member of Movement Disorder Society, member of the Queen Square Alumni, life member of the Indian Medical Association, life member of Indian Association Dermatologists and Neurologists and Nephrologists, life member of the Madras Club of Cutaneous Medicine and the Hair Research Society of India. He's authored quite a number of books. Um, a chapter, he's authored a chapter on Riva Dopa in early stage of Parkinson's disease. He's also a book in Tamil on common skin diseases, Saruma Noigar. He is also a book in Tamil on various epilepsies, Galip Noigar. He has also received 
the best book award from the Tamil Nadu government of Tamil Nadu in 2010 under the under the uh, branch of uh, medicine for which he was also given um, an amount and uh, certificate as well. He is also has to spell five more books on headache. Appavan typewriter, Tadal, uh, short scores, short stories, stories as well. And uh, he is also was honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award by our own IMA Kodam Branch, Kodam Bakram Branch. And it is now my proud privilege to invite him to deliver his talk. Stomach. These attacks last for 
24 hours to 7 hours and it's free of sin from in between. This is a very typical presentation of a classical migraine, migraine with aura. That time, every time she gets a headache, she gets a baseline investigation center or normal. And then she used to take symptomatically some kind of acetaminophen or flunarazine or triclopyrazine as in and required. <coughs> After some time, she found to have developed hypertension, systemic hypertension. Even for the test, there was there no cause for her, it was essential hypertension. Two years ago, she came with ST, suggest for TAA. There was a transient motor weakness of the right upper and lower limbs, recovered within three hours. At that time, MRI showed acute infarcts in corona radiator and a few chronic lacrimal infarcts, bilateral subcortic white matter. Investigations were within normal limits, including Doppler studies and echocardiogram. She was started on aspirin and statins. It was not the hypertension that could be assigned or attributed for her stroke. She even had chronic lacrimal infarct, small vessel involvement. The question was whether it is related to her migraine, whether this stroke was related to her migraine. That was a question that I raised. Two months later, she again presented with a frank left hemiplegia with slurring of speech. MRI showed acute right mountain infarct. Possibly the vasculitic stroke versus migraine with his ischemic stroke were considered. So within two, when she was taking aspirin, when she was, the blood pressure was very much under control, she developed a frank stroke. So the question was whether it is usual CVA or it is related to that it is a comorbidity. The stroke is a comorbidity, comorbidity for migraine or it is because of the uh, hypertension vascular issue. And then we did all the tests for her because we couldn't pinpoint the risk factor for her apart from the very mild hypertension. Except A in antinuclear antibody, all the other tests were negative. So we couldn't possibly pin her down with the autoimmune or vasculitic uh, etiology. And then she was started on regular therapy with antiplatelet drugs, statins and physiotherapy. She improved very well and was still getting her migraine headache with flat, sorry for the spelling mistake, flashes of light and aura. About a year later, she had, she was just in her kitchen cooking. Suddenly she developed some kind of giddiness, unconscious, fell down. There was nobody in the house, she fell down and then she got up after about 10 minutes or so. And then clinical diagnosis of a complex partial seizure was made. Neuroimaging at that time and EEG were normal. She was started on levetiracetam. So continues to have migraine, not frequently, but takes phenomenon on and off. She continues to work in our hospital. So this case illustrates a classical migraine with aura with a comorbid condition like stroke and another comorbid state like epilepsy, partial complex partial seizure. Most of the time when a patient comes to us with headache, every third WHO says every third patient in a general physician's office is a headache case. What kind of headache? That we have to see. So this is after the uh, seizure was normal. So the headaches quickly I come to migraine. The headaches are classified as primary and secondary. Secondary headaches will have cause, you know, for following trauma, there is a tumor, uh, or externally she has toxic symptoms, she or infection, so many other causes. They are all secondary headaches. The primary headaches, the migraine comes from the primary headache. How do you go about diagnosing migraine? Uh, detailed history is important because most of them examine the patient with headache, even migraine, in between attacks. They are absolutely normal. Unless you see them and they have the attack of migraine, uh, you don't find anything. Most of them, everything is normal. So headache alarms whether there is anything to say, there is any focal deficit pointing to a particular cause. 
then it explodes again with headache. Or there are no reflex, consider primary headache. Is there any atypical features in this? Sometimes, you know, they come with a typical attention type of headache going on for years. When they come to us with a long standing tension type of headache, it appears to be migraine. They have all the features of migraine. It is very difficult. So we have to go into the details of the history and then look for any atypical feature. If there is no atypical feature, then naturally diagnose the primary headache disorder. So that's about the diagnosing a primary disorder. What about migraine? Usually, before puberty, boys are getting more migraine than girls. After puberty, it reverses more women develop migraine compared to men. How about the age? Usual age will be around 13 to 15 years, and then goes up to peak of 35, 40 years, it reaches a peak, and then comes down around 45, 50 years, then there is no migraine. A person comes to me with headache for the first time after the age of 40 or 45, I will be hesitant to diagnose migraine. Quite unlikely to be migraine. You have to be very careful in finding out the cause for that particular headache because migraine occurring for the first time after the age of 40 or 50 is quite unlikely, but rare. So, what is migraine? You know, it's unusual. They come with a one sided pain. Or every time it's on on left side or sometimes on the right side, it keeps alternating. Recurrent, in between the attacks, absolutely symptom free. There is no headache, nothing. And an autonomic system, dysfunction. They have sweating, heart flushes, and then they have nausea, vomiting, it stays in the blood. Most of the they come with uh, the, the indigestion. The, the usual expression is, sir, I have indigestion, and then, and, and then I have the headache. It is the reverse. They have migraine and they have stasis. And then aura. We have to talk about aura, we will do it in a while. So attacks originate somewhere in the brain by an inappropriate neuronal activation that triggers a cerebral vasomotor system. Mechanisms in are complex and still poorly understood. I have put this because initially they were talking about various aspects of pain, headache. They thought it was something else. It is a neuronal activation uh, spreading to the brain and all that. Then they when Professor Wolf talked about vascular etiology, it is the origin of a uh, migraine, then the whole chain, picture changed. So it is still we are, we are not able to pinpoint what exactly is the cause for this migraine. But we know what is happening more or less, that we will see. Origin of attack, where, 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 where exactly it originates in the brain, we don't know. Experimental research and clinical arguments suggest a possible origin within the hypothalamus and the superior part of the brain stem. When they did the PET scan studies, they definitely showed increased activation in the hypothalamus and the upper part of the brain stem. So, activation of the hypothalamus seems to be the triggering factor in my brain. That also explains the autonomic features and other psychomotor features. What is an aura? Aura is a premonition that the patient feels that he or she is going to get an attack. Before that they have this feeling. It can be visual. Visual is the, more, more the most common aura in migraine headaches. Visual is a scotoma, partial loss of vision, photopsia, phosphine, floating bodies, geometric forms, fortification spectra. The fortification spectra is very important because they see a lot of formed uh, spectral uh, vision. They are able to visualize. Uh, that's bad because the prognosis is bad in these cases. And then visual hallucinations or distortions, sometimes they have macropsia. Suddenly the person who is standing in front of them, they look small. Or suddenly they look very big, suddenly they don't know where they are. That's G job. So visual hallucinations are very common in migraine patients. And sensory, the next one is paresthesia. It, it, it's it's scleroaural. 
pterofacial. It starts somewhere from the hand. It goes up to the arm. And then suddenly it jumps to the mouth. Then there are paralysis there on the mouth. And then that indicates that they are going to get an attack of migraine. All that hallucinations are quite rare in migraine. All that hallucinations are seen in most of the epilepsies, temporal lobe epilepsy, complex partial seizures. Motor weakness or ataxia, it can occur if the posterior circulation is involved. A language disorder affects that depending upon the vasculation involved. Delusion and disturbed consciousness, the job, multiple conscious trans like state. These things can happen if we really know that the comorbid state, psychiatric comorbid state with migraine. What is CSD? I would like to explain the possible origin of aura. Cortical spreading depression. When they did the PET scan, they were able to identify now a patient with migraine, no aura, they examined seven patients who developed scotomas before a developing migraine. They did the PET scan for them. There was a spreading, the uptake was high, the occipital low, indicating that it, it is the origination of the occipital lobe is, in, it is responsible for your visual uh, vision. So naturally, scotomas, they originate from here. This neuronal and glial, sorry to use all these uh, terms, so neuronal and glial, uh, neural, uh, the electrical changes, it spreads along the brain in various directions. Wherever it goes, it causes aura. So that is the basis for aura. Aura is the basis, uh, the CSE is the basis for aura. Then they said that the hypoperfusion in the oxygen cortex that can cause this kind of power. That is the beginning, that is the initiation. So aura is accompanied by a decrease in blood flow in the oxygen cortex. Perfusion diffusion made an MRI will be able to identify this particular chain. In predisposed individuals, this oligemia facilitates one or more of waves of CSD responsible for the symptoms of aura. So the Posterior circulatory disturbance causes CSD and then that produces the aura. There are not fully proof, the research is on. And then what is the cause for the pain in migraine? Most of the time, initiates such as pain they have only on one side, back of the eye, and then they have a nausea vomiting. But as the Pain progresses, they develop pain on the neck. The very typical pain in the neck and then on the occipital region. What is the cause for the spread of this pain to other areas other than the bifrontal area? They tend to three components. One, pain producing cranial and angel vessels. Brain itself is not pain sensitive. The pain is mainly due to the meninges covering with them and the blood vessels with them. They are separated. When the blood vessels are dilating, they produce pain. Other pain itself, I don't think this pain sensitive. So pain producing pain in meningeal vessels, primary upper neurons, see it's from the pure matter, it comes to the cranial meningeal vessels, from there it comes to trigeminal ganglion and also C1, C2, primary neurons. From there, second neuron goes to the thalamus and then to sensory cortex. So, Basic pain, the origin is from the meningeal vessels. And so the aura and headache, how do they do? The CSD that produces hydrogen and potassium ions, nitric oxide and arachidonic acid in the extracellular space. This causes the free nerve endings, stadium nerve endings, the vessels and meninges. It, 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 it irritates them or stimulates them. From there it spreads, as I said, to the neurovascular system of the cortex. So that is the possible explanation for the migraine pain. Okay, then we will talk about migraine. In children, there are three conditions which they say can be precursors of migraine. Psychical vomiting, 
abdominal migraine and benign with benign positional vertigo of benign but paroxysmal vertigo of childhood. These three, when a child gets, they are prone to have migraine in their later age group. I, I will not go through the uh, big section here. Let us talk about migraine quickly. Migraine comes in four stages. First stage is a prodromal pro state. Prodromal state where the patient has very vague symptoms. It varies from person to person. They have weakness, they may have some sort of readiness, they may have some uncomfortable feeling, dopaminergic most of the time. And then the next stage is aura. I have talked about aura now, various types of aura that they get. The aura between migraine and aura between temporal lobe epilepsy. If we have to be very careful because aura here it's, it, it can it is prolonged in migraine. It, is, it can go up to 60 minutes. Whereas aura in uh, complex functional seizure, the, it is very shortly, go up to maybe 5 to 10 minutes up between that. Secondly, very common uh, aura in migraine is visual. Whereas very common uh, aura is, is olfactory or auditory in uh, temporal lower complex partial seizures. After the headache, what happens in headache? I have told you the pulse, pulsatile headache or throbbing headache, it slowly becomes intensified as the time passes and then there is pain behind the eyes and then they come with severe pain. In front of they have photophobia, they cannot see light, phonophobia, they don't like the, uh, the sound of any kind. Any, any, any kind of even minor sound, it irritates them. So this headache is important. Usual question that I ask these people, whether you have headache when you get up in the morning. If they say yes, most of the time it is migraine headache. Tension headache, usually when they get up in the morning, they don't have this pain. They are quite comfortable in the morning. As the day passes by 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and then slowly they start getting headache. And by the time evening sets in, they have severe headache. Whereas in migraine, the early morning headache is quite typical. After the headache, they have post-drome. What is post-drome? It can go on for a week or so. General weakness, tiredness, irritability, and that's it. So, a migraine attack is starting from day one. It can go up to three days, seven to hours, and then of course a week for post from uh, state. Most of the time, we are not able to diagnose migraine. People miss uh, migraine because all these features are not present in migraine. Migraine is all. So, what are the types of migraine? I have talked about migraine with aura, migraine without aura, then familiar hemiplegic migraine. This is the only type of migraine where the gene has been identified. At least first line relative should have this P. So that is familiar hemiplegic migraine. They are present with weakness, motor weakness on the side, including hemiplegic. Then basilar type of migraine, that the posterior circulation is involved, they have with aura of different types like dysarthria, vertigo, tinnitus, ergoephesis, diplopia, ataxia, simultaneous bilateral paresthesia, instead of in one side, both sides they have paresthesia. It's a very difficult condition to treat and then they have severe pain. This is the most unrecognized and undiagnosed uh, condition, probable migraine. They may not have, they may have all the criteria, or may, they may be one or two criteria missing. Still it can be migraine, so that comes under probable migraine. So comorbidity, what is a comorbidity? Two conditions occurring together, they may not have the same etiological factor. 
See, it will, it will, it will examine a group of people without migraine, another group of people with migraine. If epilepsy is examined, it is more among the migraine as people. So, the comorbidity of migraine is, the epilepsy is added as a comorbidity. So, the comorbidity conditions are very much present. What are the comorbid conditions we will see? Before that, when people come with migraine, you would have seen neurologists asking for EEG. Electroencephalogram. What exactly is the cause? Why, why should they do EEG for migraine? Because a portion, certain portion of the people with migraine, they have a tendency to go in for epilepsy. So epilepsy and migraine, they interchangeably they occur. Migraine to epilepsy, epilepsy to migraine. So it is essential that they do the EEG and then see. That helps them to decide about the treatment, whether they need any anti convulsants So there are three conditions described. One is migraine triggered seizure, microlepsy. They start with migraine after some time after they develop epilepsy. Hemipenia epileptica and then post epilepsy. When a person has only epilepsy, no migraine, they can have headache after that type of epilepsy. Whether you can take it as migraine, no. Post-sexual headache is separate entity, it is associated with epilepsy, nothing to do with migraine. So that we have to, uh, that cannot come under migraine epilepsy or any kind of epilepsy. What are the complications of migraine? <coughs> chronic migraine. What is chronic migraine? It is not the number of years, any migraine. Chronic migraine, they have a specific migraine. Migraine without aura or with aura, more than 15 attacks a month. If somebody gets like that, that is diagnosed as chronic migraine. All the other things are the same, but occurrence and frequency, depending upon this, they have classified as chronic migraine. Then status migraine is, if the headache portion, that is the headache part, phase of the migraine, lasts more than 30 hours, they, any amount of medicine, they are not able to get out of the headache, there are 70 hours of headache phase, then it is status because we have to give them different kind of treatment. Persistent aura without infarction. Sometimes they don't have headache, they have only aura. The aura persists for more than an hour, sometimes days. And then they don't have pain. They have only aura. How do you know this is migraine and other previous episodes? If they have similar aura but they have no headache this time, then you do a neuroimaging, there are no infarctions. That is one. Persistent or without pain, but there are no involvement of the brain. And then migraine is infarction. The other one, they have pain, migraine, and then you do a neuroimaging, they find egg infarctions. Like how I explained to this lady, the, the previously I, I told you about the case, who had migraine, and then asymptomatic lacunar infarcts. When she became symptomatic, when we did the in neurology, we could see chronic infarction, which was present earlier, which, we never, which was not symptomatic. So that is migraine infarction, probably. So we have to manage. We have having diagnosed migraine. How are we going to manage? How are we going to tell the patient? What are the important things that we can say? The lifestyle modification is the most important type of treatment one can think of. I'll tell you why. What are the lifestyle modifications? There are certain factors that trigger the migraine. The trigger cannot be the cause for migraine. Trigger is different from cause of migraine. So trigger is that particular thing. If you avoid, you may not get an attack of migraine. So trigger is a different thing. What are the triggers? Diet. Some people fast, they do get headache. Some people take more than what they can eat sometimes. So that can also produce headache. So both extremes should be avoided. And then alcohol, red wine should be uh, a trigger for migraine for some people. Similarly, additives on certain foods. Individually, it is variable. So the individual patient should be able to identify. You must tell them that you identify your uh, trigger because whenever you get headache, think, sit and think about your food habit. What did you have? Anything new? 
that kind of a thing we should be uh, giving the patient. The chronobiologic like sleep. In it on the Sunday, so I will sleep till 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. They will definitely get it. And then keeping awake late nights, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. This is a problem with IT into IT uh, working people because they have change of their duties day and night. They do get migraines headache because of this change sleep pattern. Schedule change, like head and neck pain, or another cause. Sometimes they have severe cervical thrombosis or trigeminal neuralgia. That pain when it comes to the trigger a migraine attack. Stress and anxiety. Hormonal changes, for instance, it's very well known. Most of the uh, women with uh, menstruation, they come with migraine attack because menstruation itself can cause, can precipitate migraine attacks. Environmental factors, of course, um, when they go for this lights, you know, light glam, pop music and so many, when, when it was first introduced on stage, uh, music and dance, when they had this flickering light, they all had more of migraine attacks. Light like odors, certain odors can produce, they don't like, you know, they, they, they can get. You must be very careful whether the odor precipitated migraine or migraine aspiration has an olfactory aura. Olfactory aura usually a hydrogen cell, the fourth smell. Nobody experiences, only that patient experiences. So, certain odors, high altitude, weather change, Exercise, even sex can produce in some cases migraine. What are the comorbid conditions of migraine? Neurology, you can say epilepsy and so on. As in this case, I strongly believe that this lady with migraine, prolonged migraine right from her child, teens, she has comorbid conditions like epilepsy and stroke. Psychiatric, depression, bipolar disease, anxiety disorder, panic disorder, these. Most of the time they occur together with migraine. Cardiac, blood pressure infarction, and there are certain congenital heart diseases are found to be more commonly associated with migraine. Other Raynaud's phenomenon, all this involving the vessels, blood vessels, Raynaud's syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, asthma, and other pain disorders can be comorbidities of migraine. So we'll quickly uh, talk about. Uh, treatment. My, my way of treating migraine is more practical than going through the literature. Literature gives a lot of uh, drugs and uh, ways. I always tell the patient, first talk to them about the lifestyle modification. Secondly, I tell them there are two things. One is short prophylaxis and long prophylaxis. What is short prophylaxis? The moment patient gets aura or prodromal symptom, you start the treatment, whatever the treatment, even plain aspirin, plain acetaminophen, they do well. Supposing they wait and then they develop stasis, serious throbbing pain, any amount of medicine, any medicine for the man will be of no use because it is not at all absorbed because of the stasis. So, first accurate diagnosis and then identify triggers lifestyle modifications and the neuropharmacological. I prefer to treat them in the program itself or at the time at the time of aura itself. And then of course acute migraine when they come with severe migraine, they are not able to do their vomiting, nausea, and then actually we have to modify our treatment, we have to give the medicines by injection. Like you know, trichloroprotein or uh it got alphabets. Sometimes even you may have to give dexomethasone steroids. Analgesics, NSAIDs, for which like not to be be careful because all these side effects, if they are empty stomach and then they start taking all these, they will definitely go in for acute gastritis and other problems or NSAIDs. Mm -hmm. Specific migraine medication, ergotamine and dihydrotramatine, the side effects, they have vasos, they produce vasospasm, be careful, long term use may produce. Uh, vascular ischemic problems. Selective serotonin agonist, triptons. Triptons are the mainstay nowadays. Even triptons, they say they have to be given at the time the aura state or pre um, uh, pre 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 stage itself. 
There is no point in giving it up and having a full filler, full blown migraine at that time. Neuroleptics and antiemetics, usually we give trichloroprofessin, that, that is stematil or remedaxin. Prevention, preventive medication. What are the preventive medications we have? Preventive medications we can say beta death blockers. We have to give it for at least six months to one year, long, long duration. Age inhibitors, anti convulsants. Among the anti convulsants, sodium valproate, that is diploprate sodium, and topramate, they are useful. And then antidepressants and calcium channel artery. We can use any of these depending upon the patient's response. So, I, I just thought I will give you a bird's eye view of migraine, not going into very detailed technical details because uh, that may be uh, time consuming and that will be boring also. Thanks for the nice opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for this um, excellent uh, overview of my brain. Um, Uh, I suppose for surgery, second medical college to Marlon, the speaker. 